Hi and welcome back. Um, today I'm going to be cleaning off my palette again. Um, I've got some fairly bright colours, ones that I don't always use. Um, so I want to try this kind of similar experiment with a semi-abstract painting um, produced by mixing up the colours that I've got. As you can see here, it's a different range to my normal colours. There's alizarin crimson, Prussian blue, raw sienna, burnt sienna, and maybe a little bit of uh, gamboge as well, gamboge yellow. So mixing up all those colours, I'm now going to brush them across the dry paper, but with plenty of water on the mixture and see what happens and see um, I've had these sort of neutral browns and greys before, which have been really beautiful, but with these stronger colours, especially Prussian blue, and as which you can see there, and alizarin crimson, I'm hoping that it will give me sort of a different, a different soft collection of hues. And I'm quite liking this, so I'm subconsciously not dipping into the yellower colours. I'm keeping the mix of the blue and the red more because it's giving me these really pretty pastels um, with plenty of water to get these lovely wet in wet diffusions. I've now turned my board around so I can control the flow of the water running down the page, which was at 45 degrees tilt to encourage the water to, to run. I'm really liking the way this is looking and once the washes have settled out a bit, I'll turn it back round and keeping it at this tilt of 45 degrees, um, using my large Ron Ranson Pro Art Harky brush, I'll just make some minor adjustments here and there to the wash, but I think it's looking very pretty. Um, I like this pastel look. It will dry a bit lighter than this, but it's looking really pretty at the moment. I think I can do something with this, and it's very different from the neutrals that I did, um, that I achieved in the previous palette cleaning um, experiments. This is a clean, damp flat brush, a three quarter inch flat brush, and I'm using it to lift out a horizon line. It looks very, very bold here, but it will soften because the paint's all still wet and it's all still moving because the boards are tilt. And I shall soften and blend it down a little bit in a minute. And using exactly the same method to lift out a few lighter patches which should soften down um, in the foreground. And I'm just lifting out the bead of paint um, and water that's um, accumulating across that horizon line as the paint continues to run down and follow the law of gravity and run down the page. So I'm just making sure that I keep that fairly clean um, and you can see that that horizon line is much subtler now. And with exactly the same thing with these white patches just keeping them tidied up a bit, but also adding in a little bit of dark to the wet areas um, so that I get some variation of tone in the foreground. Maybe a few more white bits lifted out. I'm still not quite sure what I'm going to do with this experiment, but it's beginning to look, as a lot of my paintings do, like a sort of a seascape um, or a beachscape at low tide. So I'm just going to play around either with these sort of puddles or waves, whatever they turn out to be. Um, it's nice to have them lifted out and softened during the wet in wet painting process. So now I'm really happy with that. I think it looks really pretty, so I don't want it to run anymore. So I've laid it flat and I'm leaving it to dry completely. I'll come back and continue as soon as it's dry. Well, I lost the light yesterday afternoon before it had dried. So it's the next day and you can see that things have softened and lightened up as they've dried, but it's looking really pretty with these pale pastel pinks and blues. I've added a little bit of extra Payne's Grey to the mix and I've mixed it up with a 
bit of um, the Prussian blue and a bit of the alizarin crimson, so it's just softer than a sort of really dark grey rather than sort of um, looking more black. And I've decided to go with my idea of a sort of seascape at low tide. And I'm going to keep it really simple and put in a distant headland using a half inch um, flat brush just breaking it up so it looks as if maybe there's a couple of little rocks or islands um, or, or, or smaller headlands in the distance towards the middle, making sure that it's fairly straight, but just sort of with hints of a distant headland with sort of rocky sort of landscape um, around it and with the beach fading out and leading up to it. And next I'm going to just put in a few simple, very loose, very su uh, impressionistic suggestions of figures. This is that same mixture. And it's fairly well pigmented this time, not much water, so it's nice and dark. And um, that's Prussian blue, Payne's grey with a touch of alizarin crimson. And I'm using a synthetic Polina Bright um, synthetic mop brush, it's a size one, um, just to rough in these figures. It's going to be a typical sort of um, couple taking the dog for a walk across, across the, the low tide sands. It gives me the chance to practice my reflections again. So keeping it really simple, just um, sort of painting shapes that imply these people rather than trying to paint arms, legs, heads, coats, that sort of thing. And then back to the flat brush with its lovely um, chisel edge. It's a very fine edge. It's a Cotman um, One Stroke Series 666 brush. And it gives me these lovely um, horizontal indications of the shape and mass of the figures above reflected in the wet sand. I forgot to say I'm using Milford 100% cotton paper today. Um, it's a quarter imperial sheet and it's, um, well, that's about 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. It's 140 pound weight and it's a lovely cotton paper. It's really useful for lifting out um, some cotton papers like Saunders Waterford. You can, they're less um, good for lifting back to the white of the paper but you can see from these lovely pale um, marks that I achieved in the wet in wet wash in the foreground that you can lift beautifully with Milford so you get the best of both worlds it really is a lovely paper that I highly recommend I think it's made by St Cuthbert's Mill And I think it was made to, to try and uh, replicate the old Watman paper, which was really beautiful and which I'm lucky enough to have some tucked away. But they stopped making the Watman paper and a lot of artists really missed it. So St Cuthbert's Mill came up with Milford and, as I say, it's a wonderful paper. So I've moved back to my small calligraphy brush or my rat liner, as I think it's called. I'm just going to try and paint in the suggestion of a little dog sniffing something in the sand. Tail up, head down. And then back to the flat brush to integrate those reflections and the figures into the foreground with a few sweeping strokes of quite pale paint um, to indicate sort of um, those sort of ripples and shapes in the sand and ripples also 
on the surface of the wet sand um, where there might be a little bit of water collect collected there. And just another little group, I think, of figures further in the distance, keeping the heads round about the same sort of level as my larger figures. Um, so that keeps everything in perspective and in proportion. This time just indicating with slightly paler paint for aerial perspective and distance, um, indicating a family. Maybe a couple and a child. Using the small calligraphy brush again. So for putting in the detail, I've swapped between three brushes, um, a small synthetic mop, um, a flat brush and a small calligraphy brush. And each time I've needed a different type of mark, I have swapped to the appropriate brush that helps me to make those marks the most easily. And I think it's good practice to get to know your brushes really well so that you can then exploit the brushes um, and get the best possible mark making out of them. It makes a painter's life much easier to use the right brush for the right kind of mark. So now just back to the flat brush again because it's the perfect tool to put in these kinds of horizontal sweeping marks that will indicate either a water surface or a wet surface, keeping them fairly horizontal. So that now this is bringing the painting together and actually cementing the foreground um, as a sort of slightly more detailed area. Um, and then the eye will just look out across the sort of, sort of empty, abstract, low tide sands and hopefully see the scene that I'm hoping um, to have created here. So peeling off the tape and having a look at it, I think I'm, I'm reasonably happy with it the way it is at the moment. I could add some more figures in the far distance, maybe some birds in the sky, but I'd rather stop before um, I feel it's completely finished because that way I try and avoid the danger of overworking something that's as simple as this. I mean, this really turned out, I think, to be all about the sky. It's that beautiful blue and pink wash that I really, really um, like the look of. So I shall be remembering the combination of Prussian blue and alizarin crimson and a touch of those other colours, the, the raw and the burnt sienna and the Payne's grey, um, that's created this beautiful, soft palette of colours for this experiment, uh, using slightly different colours up on my palette before cleaning them. And also, as always, it's good figure practice. Practising figures um, is, is, I think, quite important because they can be quite daunting. So if you're just using up maybe the old paint on your palette and using the back of an old painting, then there's less risk, there's less waste. You know, you feel freer to experiment if you do that. OK, so I hope that was helpful. Um, thanks so much for watching. Uh, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. And happy painting. Bye.